All right. So the last the last part of what we're going to talk about today um, is similar to the last, is uh, but it involves paratactic cooling. So we're going to look at what happens uh, upon cooling in one of these uh, ternary phase diagrams, but it's going to be for a paratactic reaction. All right. So I always think it's useful to go back to the binary system um, and look at um, what happens there, right? So uh, the first thing to, to keep in mind uh, is if we're at a composition of X. So let's look at a paratactic rea reaction where we have um, X. And so the significance here is that X is the composition of the phase AB, right? X is that same composition. So what happens is up here at the high temperatures, uh, this is liquid, 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 and at the liquidus, we start to form beta. And so we're forming beta in this region. And so just above this critical temperature here, we can determine the amount um, of beta that we have, right? So we form beta uh, as we eliminate liquid, but at that critical temperature, right below it, right? We start to form AB and we form, everything goes to AB. So effectively liquid and beta are transformed into AB and all of the beta is consumed uh, at that point. So that's what this is talking about up here is that all the beta is consumed at that paratectic temperature. The difference, and we're gonna take a look at this uh, in the, the next, uh, in a later lecture, um, is that if we look at a different composition, so now let's look at a composition that still goes through the paratectic reaction, but uh, it goes through what we call partial resorption. And so what happens here, uh, so now the composition you can see is not the same as AB. And so what happens is initially uh, beta is formed, just like the other, the other case, and we form more and more beta. And then at the paratectic temperature, uh, liquid and beta are transformed into um, AB. But the difference here is that there is still some beta um, because we formed so much beta, oop, excuse me, uh, because we formed so much beta uh, in this initial portion here, only some of it is uh, consumed at the paratectic temperature. And so below the paratectic temperature, we're left with AB, but also some remaining beta. And so that's why we say partially resorbed, because the beta is only partially consumed to form the compound AB. So that's the kind of the difference here. And it's a little easier to see in binary. It's going to be a lot tougher to see in ternary, but I'm going to show you how we can do that. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So in this example, we're going to go through this paratectic reaction upon cooling. And so I'm going to go through the same thing that we did with eutectic. I want to trace the crystallization path upon cooling to show you uh, what the liquid composition looks like and overall what's happening in this reaction. So we're gonna start with the composition X uh, in this uh, primary phase field. And then we're gonna, and we already know that it goes through the paratectic reaction, but we'll, we'll kind of go through um, each of the steps and, and show you what happens in that case. So, we, um, so the first thing, uh, again, we can indicate what the um, liquidus temperature is. So in this case, uh, whatever contour this falls on, right, that would tell us that above that temperature, we'd have 100% liquid uh, at this composition until it crosses that point, at which we would start to form alpha. So path one, as normal, uh, this is liquid, and then we start to form our solid alpha, and then we're left over with a different liquid, and it's gonna follow path one, All right? So L prime is the second liquid. And so it looks just the same as it did for eutectic. So nothing's really changed, but once we, and then again, the liquid composition changes steadily on that line that again, you can extend back to the composition of the solid phase A alpha. Um, and it's gonna extend until the boundary curve. And then at that point, we're gonna have path two, right? And so that's what we have here. So below this temperature, this is just kind of going back a bit, but below that temperature, we start to form 
the solid in that solid form is alpha and it looks the same as what we've had before. All right, so now the boundary curve. Um, in this case, we've already been forming alpha, but at this point, we're gonna start to form gamma, right? So this is where gamma joins the party. So for path two, the second liquid L prime, uh, we still have alpha and now gamma form. And then uh, again, the liquid changes. So we're gonna call it L prime, L double prime. And so that's where we start to form the boundary. That's where we start to follow the boundary curve. And so we're gonna follow it in this way, just like before. All right, so up to this point, so all the way, the crystallization path from X all the way down to P really follows the same path as the, the eutectic. So nothing really has changed uh, in this case. <clears throat> so this is really the only difference that you're gonna see. So at point P is where we start to see the difference uh, occur. So basically at that one temperature. So at that point, the liquid has the paratectic composition because it's reached this point. And so we're going to start to form, or we already have been forming alpha and gamma, so we will still form them. But we also have the um, a third one involved. This is AB. And so in this, in this case, the liquid plus alpha go to form this AB and gamma. And so this is a, a little bit different than what happens before. So in the, in the previous case, we formed all three of those solids. Here, we're actually consuming uh, AB. And again, that's the, the type of reaction we have with a paratactic is a solid gets transformed into making a different solid. In that case, this is AB. So we can kind of draw our crystallization path for this reaction that we have. All right, so below the paratactic temperature, if we wanna look at the amounts uh, of phases that we have, again, same procedure that we've done before, right? So this should look familiar. This will look like the uh, compatibility triangle, right? So below the paratactic temperature, we know that we have um, alpha, uh, gamma, and AB. And so that's the triangle that we've drawn here. Our composition of the alloy is X. And so we can, again, apply the ternary lever rule to determine how much of those components we have. So effectively, the type of case this is, is the partial resorption case, right? Because we've formed um, alpha above the paratectic and it gets consumed, but there's still some left over, right? So this is the paratectic case. Um, and so that's why we have um, three solid phases, even though uh, it shows that alpha is being consumed uh, in this case.